So, welcome to today's lecture and uh, what we will do is we will uh, continue from where we left off okay. and uh, towards the end of the last lecture, we had uh, derived the normal stress boundary condition and the tangential stress boundary condition. Now, specifically speaking, what we have done is taken into account the fact that you could have a surface tension variation along the interface okay. and uh, there is a contribution of the surface tension variation along the interface in the tangential stress boundary condition. In the normal stress boundary condition, it is only the surface tension which appears, not the variation of the surface tension. That is at every point on the interface, the local value of the surface tension tells you what the difference is between the normal stresses, whereas the difference in the tangential stresses is going to be given by the gradient of the surface tension. Okay. So, this is your, uh, this is in fact the most general form of the normal stress boundary condition and this is your tangential stress boundary condition. So, what I want to emphasize here is that T is the total stress which is given by minus P plus P i plus tau. So, what you can do is you can actually substitute this back in and keep the pressure term separately and the uh, shear stress term separately and then proceed. Okay. So, if you do that, what you will get for the normal stress boundary condition is P tilde minus P plus N dot tau minus tau tilde dotted with N minus gamma del dot N equals 0. Okay. So, what you have, supposing there is no liquid moving, uh, moving inside and you only have your spherical uh, drop, the, then the tau term is 0 and the difference in the pressures is going to be balanced by the curvature term, which is what you are used to from your surface tension courses earlier, P1 minus P2 equal to uh, gamma divided by R or 2 gamma divided by R. Now, uh, when it comes to the tangential stress boundary condition, you could have a gradient of gamma can be induced by gradients of concentration or temperature. Okay. And uh, what we are interested in is uh, for the Marangoni convection problem, gradients of temperature. So, I am going to talk now about how this boundary condition manifests itself in the context of the Marangoni convection problem. Because once you know how this boundary condition translates to the Marangoni convection problem, then you can uh, solve because you know how to solve because this is the only new boundary condition which is coming into the picture. Okay. All the other boundary conditions you are familiar with. For example, in the Marangoni convection, what do I have? I would have let us say solid wall here. Okay, and this is my interface, this is my gas liquid interface and let us say interface does not deform, that is it remains flat, okay, there is no undulation of the interface, just to keep life simple for right now. Then what are the boundary conditions you are going to use at the solid wall? you have temperature equals some fixed value T0 let us say, 
you have the no slip boundary condition and the impermeable boundary condition for the velocities. Those are things which you know how to use, okay. Then you have the no slip and the impermeable wall conditions. What about here? Since the interface is not deflecting, the vertical component of the velocity is going to be 0, okay. That is vertical component of velocity equals 0. Then you have the heat loss boundary condition. What is the heat loss boundary condition? If this is a z axis, boundary condition is minus k dt by dz equals h times t minus t ambient. That is the other boundary condition at the interface, okay. And what is it you normally use as a gas liquid interface? You normally say the shear stress is 0. When you have a gas liquid interface, we normally say shear stress is 0, but we are going to modify it now because you have the shear stress equal to 0, when does that, uh, 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 how does that arise from here? That is a specific case of this general problem, okay. T is the shear stress exerted by the uh, gas and that is 0 because it is inviscid. Normally you neglect the gradients in the surface tension and so that becomes 0 and what you are left with is T dot n equal to 0 and that is uh, T dot t tilde dot n equal to 0, that is just 0 shear stress condition, but now this guy is not 0, okay. And so we want to see how this gets modified, that is the idea, okay. So now the tangential stress boundary condition is modified. So let us look at the, how to calculate this. Uh, tangential stress boundary condition. We need to look at this surface tension gradient, okay. And this is the gradient along the surface. Let us look at our very specific problem that we have. The specific problem I have is Z is in this direction and let us say X is in this direction and Y is into the board. Okay, so I mean I want to derive this tangential stress boundary condition for this problem here. Now, what is gradus of gamma? It is actually the gradient along the surface, but if you go back to what I uh, wrote last time, it is the actual gradient minus n of n dot del. That is the definition, okay. This is the normal component of the gradient. I am subtracting that from the total gradient and I get the thing along the surface. Now, what is the gradient operator? It is I d by dx plus j d by dy plus k d by dz. And what is n? n is the vector in the z direction, the k, minus k and n dot del is k dot whatever, the gradient, so that is going to give me again d by dz. So I just wanted to show to you that of course, since I have kept my life simple, n is just k, but if you had a deformed interface, then you have to go back to calculating uh, n and then doing the dot product and all that in terms of the uh, function f, okay. So that is your gradus. Now I need to get gradus of gamma. How does the surface tension vary? But surface tension variation is induced by the temperature variation. So I am going to have to find something like gamma as gamma naught times 1 minus uh, 
I am assuming that the surface tension varies linearly with temperature. Okay. At t equal to t naught, gamma equals gamma naught, that is the surface tension value and uh, this tells you the rate of variation. The way I have defined the gamma t, it is a positive quantity because surface tension is decreasing with temperature, the decreasing part is inc included in min minus sign. Okay. So, remember the way I got things, gamma t is positive. I mean, sometimes this becomes important, well, otherwise, you will get a dimensionless number which is negative and you are breaking your head as to what is happening. Okay. So, now d gamma by d, so what I am interested in is gradus of gamma is nothing but i d by d x of gamma plus j d by d y of gamma. So, I am going to write this as d gamma by d t, d gamma by d temperature multiplied by d temperature by d x. Okay. So, d gamma by d temperature is nothing but minus gamma naught gamma t. This is the slope of the curve. So, this is minus gamma naught gamma t times i dt by dx plus j dt by dy. Okay. So, all I have done is just uh, use this chain rule d gamma by dx is d gamma by dt multiplied by dt by dx and we do not know what these are right that is something which we need to find out and uh, yeah what about uh, see I found out the gradient vector I am going to have to take the dot product with my tangential direction. Now, there are two tangential directions, one is along the x direction, one is along the y direction. Okay. So, I need to, if I really want to use this equation, I need to find what the uh, component is along both the directions. So, actually that is, this is actually two equations, that is the point I am trying to make. Okay. So, uh, let us look at this guy, t dot t minus t tilde dotted with n. We will keep it simple, oh, yeah, we do not have to sit down and uh, do the calculation because the interface is flat, you guys can uh, quickly tell me what the components are. This guy is the fluid at the top, right? so that is inviscid, so this is not going to contribute. Uh, okay. I want to, uh, yeah, that is right. This is from, and th we are not looking at the normal stress boundary condition, we are looking at the tangential stress boundary condition, right. So, this is actually tau t here is tau. Why? Because we are doing the tangential balance, not the normal stress balance. When you look at the normal stress balance, only then the pressure comes into the picture, okay. So, I need to write this as tau minus tau tilde dotted n dotted t. What are the components here or what is tau minus tau tilde dotted n? Tau is 0 since we have gas which is inviscid. What about tau tilde? That is going to be given by, I am interested in tau tilde dotted n okay. and uh, the n is in the z direction. So, the two components we are actually going to participate, we are going to contribute will be tau z x and tau z y. Okay. So, I have tau z x. and tau z y will be the two components. Okay. Clearly, tau z x is acting in the x direction and tau z y is acting in the y direction and so, the, this particular term is my 
again a vector tau minus tau tilde dotted n is again a vector having two components. So, now I need to do the dot product with t which gives me uh, the, uh, the uh, unit vector in the x direction and the unit vector in the y direction. Okay. So, now what I am saying is we take the balance in the x direction. In the x direction, what is it that is going to contribute? Tau zx. And that is given by mu d w by dx plus du by dz. Okay. That is the component which is occurring in x direction and this must be balanced by the component here acting in the x direction. What I am saying is I am taking t in two directions, t x direction and t in y direction. Okay. The thing in the x direction is going to be the i term dt by dx. So, this tau zx is already a minus sign. So, I am going to move this to this side and the gradient of gamma must be equal to minus gamma naught gamma t dt by dx. That is my x component balance. And similarly, my y component balance is going to be mu times dw by dy plus dy by dz. Is this clear? So, I am saying that what I have is a vectorial equation here before I take the dot product. I am just saying that each component has to be 0 and so I am just saying the dot product in the x direction and the y direction. So, now I need to make some simplifications. I have assumed that the vertical component of velocity is 0 everywhere. So, dw by dx and dw by dy will be 0. At this interface, we have assumed that there is no deflection of the interface. See, that is the reason I am unable, I do not need to worry about the kinematic boundary condition okay, and the normal stress boundary condition. So, all I do is I just say that the vertical component of velocity is 0 for all x and y, which means dw by dx and dw by dy will be 0. Okay, so dw by dx equals dw by dy equals zero if there's no deflection. Okay, since interface is flat, this tells you du by dz is zero, dv by dz is zero. Uh, no, sorry, du by dz equal to that, du by dz equals that. In case there is no Marangoni effect, no surface tension variation with temperature, you get your zero shear stress boundary condition. Okay, so everything is fine. So, what I need to do is write this equation as mu du by dz equals minus gamma naught gamma t dt by dx mu dv by dz minus gamma naught gamma t times dt by dx. This is at the z equals d, the interface. Now, this is fine. But uh, I want uh, you to uh, you know recall what we did for the Rayleigh Binard problem. In the Rayleigh Binard problem, you had uh, basically a similar situation, a stagnant liquid, some temperature variation, okay, and uh, you had your velocity components. 
And if you go back, what we did is we eliminated the pressure term, we eliminated the velocity term and finally, we ended up with only the two variables, the vertical component of velocity and the temperature. Okay. So, what I want to do is we are going to use the same approach as what we did for the Rayleigh Binar when it comes to solving. In fact, you guys are going to use the same approach when it comes to solving this equation. I am just outlining what the procedure is. So, I want to get rid of these components of velocities in terms of the vertical component of velocity and how do you do that? To do that by uh, uh, using the equation of continuity, right? because that is the one which relates to all these guys. So, I am going to differentiate this with respect to x. I am going to differentiate this with respect to, I think there is some problem here. Dot t by dot y, is it? Yeah, that is good. With dot t by dot y, I am happy. Then I differentiate this with respect to y. Then I get, uh, uh, you know, something having du by dx, something having dv by dy. I go back to the equation of continuity, I add, subtract, do something, and get everything in terms of w and temperature. Okay. And then finally, I will have an equation for W and temperature, only two variables like a hat for the Rayleigh Bernard. Okay. So, let us do this. Differentiate this with respect to x mu d square u dx dz equals minus gamma naught gamma t d square t by dx squared. I am going to add these guys and what do I get? Adding, I get d by dz of du by dx plus dv by dy equals minus gamma naught gamma t d square t by dx squared plus d square t by dy squared. And this from the equation of continuity is minus dw by dz. So, I get minus d square w by dz squared equals that and which means mu multiplied by d square w by dz squared equals gamma naught gamma t. I am going to put temperature. H is basically telling you it is on the horizontal direction or the surface x and y. Okay. So, basically this tells me that the second derivative of the vertical component of velocity multiplied by the viscosity equals gamma naught gamma t times del h square t. That is the boundary condition which uh, is arising because of your surface tension dependent uh, temperature dependent surface tension. I want to you know specifically realize that in this boundary condition the velocity and the temperature are actually coupled. Okay. The velocity and the temperature get coupled here. So basically velocity and temperature are coupled they go hand in hand, they uh, affect each other and it is through this boundary condition that this coupling is taking place because at the end of the day you there has to be a, some interaction between these two. It cannot be that they are decoupled, velocity is doing whatever it wants, temperature is doing whatever it wants because it is a net effect. So, this is where whereas uh, now if you went back to the Rayleigh Binard problem, the coupling was through the differential equation because you had the gravity term which had temperature okay, and you had the velocity term and if you go back to your equation, you will see that it is a differential equation which had the coupling between the velocity and the temperature, temperature and the velocity. In fact, if you were to now go back, okay, so the, basically I want to tell you that this is the boundary condition which you are going to use at the top surface okay, in addition to the uh, other boundary conditions which are classical which you are comfortable with. Okay. So, I just wanted to point out 
that um, when you solve your equation for the Marangoni stability problem or any Marangoni convection problem at the interface you will use this boundary condition in addition to other stuff. Of course, I have kept the interface flat. If you keep the interface moving then you need to worry about how f changes. What I want you to do and I am not going to solve the problem but I am just going to tell you what exactly you have to do. So, since this problem is so similar to the Rayleigh Binet problem you just have to mimic whatever we did for the Rayleigh Binet problem okay and um, the solution procedure for the onset of convection. So, you write down the Navier-Stokes equation the equation of continuity and the Navier-Stokes equation and energy balance. So, what is the base state that you have? Base state is whose stability you are interested in finding out that is the one where the liquid does not move ok. So, now that is u equals v equals w equals 0 that is the liquid stationary solution and what about temperature? Temperature is going to be linear but then the boundary condition at the top is slightly different remember it is not that the temperature at the top surface is fixed you need the boundary condition of minus you, you have to find the linear profile using the condition minus k dt dx equals h times t minus t ambient ok. Temperature is linear, but upper boundary condition is t ambient. Okay. So, this is what the base state is then you do the usual linearization ok. You linearize the Navier-Stokes equation and what would you get? you would have uh, the density the gravity term I am going to treat with density constant I am not going to I am not worried about including the effect of temperature variation of density in this Marangoni problem in the Rayleigh Binet problem I included that. So, for all practical purposes my equations for the momentum are decoupled how the coupling occur only through the gravity term. Okay. So, point I am trying to make here is the velocity equations do not depend on temperature. Because I am assuming properties are constant ok the density is constant and so everywhere uh, my velocity equations are independent but the velocity equations will affect the temperature equations. It looks like it is a one way coupling is this clear ok. So, that means and temperature so you will get something like del power 4 w equals 0 that would be your fourth order equation. Okay. Uh, you can do it this way also if you go back to your Rayleigh Binet problem and you put the Rayleigh number equal to 0 because Rayleigh number remember contain that uh, beta uh, the coefficient of the density how it changes with temperature. So, if the density is not changing with temperature you just put that term equal to 0 that means the Rayleigh number is 0. So, you can just go back to your Rayleigh Binet problem put Rayleigh number equal to 0 you will get this ok. The temperature equation will be 
del square theta okay equals some minus w something like that i have not derived the exact equation there may be some uh, parameters here okay will be of this form the f this is the form because when you do the linearization you will have del square theta on one side okay the conduction term and then the inertial term will give you this minus w either yes it will be minus w because the slope is negative no this is the form of the equation not the exact equation the point is theta is dependent upon the velocity it looks here that this is a one way coupling in the sense w does not depend on theta okay, if you just look at the differential equations that is what it would appear it would appear that w is independent and uh, theta depends on w but actually that is not true why because of this boundary condition there which actually relates the w and temperature okay so that is basically what you have to do you have to remember that although it looks like it they are independent they are actually coupled to each other and the coupling is through that boundary condition so how do you go about solving this so you go about solving this the usual way which is del power 4 w equal to 0 and del uh, per square theta equal to minus w you assume you know periodicity in the infinite direction which is x okay and uh, seek solutions of the form e power i alpha x then convert it to an ordinary differential equation in the z direction okay and uh, then you will get solutions and the, you use the condition that I mean there will be some arbitrary constants coming you want to get a non-zero solution to this system of equations to find the onset of this thing the other important thing which I missed out is there is a dimensionless number which is going to come uh, when you solve this problem and the dimensionless number which comes is going to come through this boundary condition here this dimensionless number which comes is I mean when you make the equations dimensionless and when you solve this dimension number dimensionless number is called Marangoni number okay and that will be the dimensionless number which comes on the right hand side so for example this equation uh, the tangential stress condition on being made dimensionless has m a the Marangoni number okay m a is the Marangoni number and uh, clearly here again viscosity has a role to play in the sense it tries to damp out the convection if the gamma t is very large the surface tension uh, dependency on temperature is large then that guy is going to overcome uh, the viscous damping so for sufficiently large values of Marangoni number you expect to see convection okay for uh, yeah and this is the equivalent of your Rayleigh number that you have in Rayleigh number you have the beta term which was how the density dependent on temperature here you have the surface tension dependency on temperature and clearly because surface tension is a interface property it is going to occur only in the boundary condition okay whereas the gravity term is a bulk property it is occurring in the differential equation so this Marangoni number um, above uh, Marangoni number critical we expect convection okay because if Marangoni number is 0 when gamma t is 0 there is going to be nothing going on it is going to be just sitting as it is the liquid so your job now is to find this critical Marangoni number so how do you go about doing that 
to find Marangoni number critical, we have to seek W as W star of Z times E power sigma T plus I beta X X I beta X. Uh, this is X, no? I have X here, yeah. And theta S, theta star of Z times E power sigma T plus I beta X. That is periodic solutions in the X direction, which is infinity, growing linearly in time, uh, exponentially in time, okay. And uh, this is my Z dependency. I am going to substitute this in these equations which come by linearization. I mean, you have done this linearization before so many times. So, just go back to the really bad problems. Same thing, you make it dimensionless like you did earlier and you proceed, okay. And uh, what we will do is we are looking for neutral stability, right. So, the point where things are just going to go from stable to unstable for the onset of convection. So, here again you can prove that sigma has to be real, sigma is not complex, okay. So, we are going to find the point of uh, transition from stable to unstable by putting sigma equal to 0, just like we did for the really binary problem, okay. So, here sigma is real and so put sigma equal to 0 to get the, the onset of convection. Clearly, this Marangoni number critical will depend upon the heat transfer coefficient because there is an extra parameter which has come into the picture. So, this is a heat transfer coefficient. So, you will get a Biot number kind of thing when you make it dimensionless S d by k. So, for different values of Biot number, you will get different Marangoni number curves. And again, you will have a critical wave number at which the convection is going to start and you can find out what the wave number is. So, the analysis is exactly the same as what we have done for uh, Rayleigh Bernard. In fact, I think maybe these days with things like Mathematica, if you can uh, get the ordinary differential equation, you can possibly plug it in to Mathematica and uh, get your solution, get the condition for which the determinant is 0 and plot Marangoni number versus the wave number for which you get a non-zero solution. Okay, and uh, for this will be for different Biot numbers. So that's what I want you to do. In fact, I want you to actually calculate this particular thing. I want you to calculate Marangoni number versus beta. Beta, remember, is a wave number. Okay, you'll get some curve like this, and this particular curve is for a fixed Biot number. Biot number is fixed. There will be two dimensionless parameters in the problem. One is the Marangoni number, one is the Biot number. So, for a fixed Biot number, you will find the thing. So, if the Biot number is different, you will get one more curve. So, you get a family of curves and uh, you need to find out what this is. And so, this is the critical Marangoni number, okay. So, your job is to solve these two equations by substituting this form for the solution, just like we did earlier, okay. And since we have done it earlier, I am not repeating it. So, you guys just do it, get and uh, since it is a linear equation, you will, your solution is going to be in the form of sin hyperbolic beta x or z, sin cos hyperbolic beta z, things like that. Then once you have the solutions for theta and this, put the boundary conditions, find a non-zero solution by putting the determinant equal to 0. That determinant equal to 0 for will the, the determinant of a matrix which has Marangoni number, beta and Biot number. That matrix will have all these three parameters, you understand. So, you fix Biot number, then there are two parameters remaining, Marangoni number and beta. So, for different betas find Marangoni number for which the de determinant is 0, get this curve, get that minimum, okay. So, that is what you have to do and uh, that will tell you this thing. But I think the important point I want to emphasize this is boundary condition because that I think is a new thing here and you sh should be able to include this boundary condition and you should be able to solve. You can generalize this for 
systems where there is a temperature variation and where there is a concentration variation, when there is a liquid liquid layer, two layers of liquids, so many things can be done once you understand how this boundary condition has to be uh, formulated, okay. So that is as far as Marangoni convection is concerned, so tomorrow we will solve uh, some other problem, okay, thanks.